Welcome to this corner of my living room where I'm now seated in my rocking chair. So if you happen to see this happen, let me know and I can stop rocking. But I've got my friendly papyrus next to me. I love this plant. I'm inspired to talk about emotional intelligence today or navigating emotions. It's something that I'm still learning myself as well. So by no means am I an expert in it. I'm not trying to suggest anybody do anything. I'm just trying to provide a little bit of insight from a video that I just got done watching um, from my friend Allison, who inspired me to kind of put this out there. Because as I was watching her video, um, I thought of this very particular website that I reference a lot when I do readings on myself and many other people. So I'll put a link um, where that website is if you want to take a look at it. It's really cool um, because the guy who writes it about navigating these emotions, identifying them, finding their significance, et cetera, et cetera. There's so much information on it. But it's a really cool website because he's color-coded a lot of different concepts. And so it's a very visual way to look at it as well. I know that um, visuals are extremely helpful in astrology, um, if you do astrology yourself or if you're into it um, as you know, just a hobby, um, you can probably appreciate that kind of sentiment. But um, we'll just get right into it. So I hear a lot about fear <clears throat> going around and about how fear can restrict us and about how the fear can blind us or is somehow attached to a illusion aspect of something in our lives that's coming to us. You know, I woke up today and um, on my news feed, I've seen tons and tons and tons of advertisements from gurus, help self-help gurus who are talking about, you know, they're trying to lure me in with a, uh, a statement like, have you tried getting more clients? Have you tried getting more customers? Here's the way to do it. You don't have to, you don't have to put yourself out there. You don't have to um, do all of this and all of that. There's an easy solution. The easy solution is just make ads and whatever, whatever. But I can't tell you how many of these, the same framework comes into play and it's just the same shit recycled over and over again. Excuse my language, but it's true. So, um, the talk about fear and about how fear motivates us to judge and motivates us to um, put you in a corner, put that in its place and be disconnected in a sense. And I hear a lot about how love is the opposite of fear. I'm not going to say it's wrong and I'm not going to say that what I'm going to talk about is the right way because there what I'm trying to talk about is saying there is no right way. And I'm just trying to incorporate a little bit to the discussion. So that's where I'm coming from. I just need you to understand that first and foremost before we get into this. So um, it's not set in stone. And that's the precise beauty of it. It is that it's visceral and that this um, is something that can help people navigate something that is specifically not logical and has nothing to do with the mind. I was talking with a friend just yesterday about this and, and he seems to observe a lot of the issues that he's going on with his life currently in a very logical manner, in a very calculative manner. And so when I tried it, when I try talking to him about um, how he feels, he's flabbergasted and at a loss for words because he hasn't explored that emotional depth or servitude of how we can navigate um, how we can navigate what's visceral within us. So emotions don't just come out of nowhere. They, they have a reason. They have a, a message to tell us. And they have, um, oftentimes they're a transportation device, I guess you could say, uh, an emotional car that you can get into and drive from one place to another if what you need is to travel. So fear. In Chinese astrology, fear is a water-based emotion. 
And so if you've been watching some of my videos as of late, you'll understand that the winter time and the dead of winter, especially in northern hemisphere lying countries and places on Earth, stuff that gets closer to the poles gets colder. And we all know that, right? <laughs> um, so snow, ice, water, it's, it's cold, it's calculated, it's moving forward. Um, some of the emotions that we can see with water, I'm going to open up this document. So if you can open it with me, if you want to take a look, scroll all the way down. There's five little columns, all color-coded green, red, yellow, white, and blue for the five phases or the five elements. So we're going to go down to water, which is on the very right-hand side, and we can see the place where it says mental quality, so spontaneity, right? Water is spontaneous. Have you ever tried to trap water? If you have, like if you've poured it into a glass or if you've watered a plant, does that water stay there forever? Can you force water to do anything that it doesn't want to? Can you make water dry? Can you make water abrasive? Sure, you can, but it's not going to stay that way forever. If you put water into a freezer, sure enough, it'll turn into an ice cube. But is that ice cube going to last forever? If you take the ice cube out and you expose it to the other five elements, or the other, the other four elements, the five phases, it's going to melt, it's going to adapt, it's going to change. So spontaneity is like this, it's liquid. And there's a reason that we can use that, that adjective to describe something that's watery. Water is liquid by its nature. It's not just water, but liquidity itself is the, the greater sense of what water is. And when you study Chinese, language itself, you can appreciate this on another level too, because the character for water and river embodies such a signature within the very written word itself. And uh, so spontaneity can manifest in positive or negative ways, right? Emotionally, we can be fearful we can try to provide a distance. We can try to flee in the same way that water flees its starting point to run its course into the ocean eventually or to collect into a pool or to become a lake or a river or a torrent or whatever it may be, depending on its surroundings. But fear is, <clears throat> it's called a negative emotion because Oftentimes it is, and oftentimes it is restricting, and it prevents us because it provides a distance. So if what we need is greater distance, fear is a very primal message from an ancient part of ourselves that tells us, hey, take notice, pay attention. There's something here that you need to be calculated about, that you need to be uh, expedious about in your enactment. You need to make a decision. It might need to be quick. It might need to be, yeah, fast um, and decisive in nature. So when we see in nature even, um, you go into the woods, you can observe fear all around you in animals. They're expressing it in all sorts of ways. Now, Fear can be bad, just like any other emotion, if we get stuck on it unnecessarily. And that's where, you know, I hear all about, all this talk about fear, and I'm, and I'm personally really on board with it. Um, I'm not going to disagree that, uh, that fear is this or that, or bad in this context or whatever. I'm not here to talk about that today. I want to provide some illustration on how we can transide all of the different emotions that are possible or palatable and what that says about what's going on with us that day inside us and a little bit outside us too. And by that, I mean the feng shui or the environment that we have going on. Um, feng shui, most people can think of as or most people hear about feng shui, they think, oh, I'm going to place my potted plant here. Or, oh, I have to buy a house and it has to face the east or it has to 
um, have a really good flow in the center between the doors on this side of it and the entryway over here. It can be like that, but emotions are just as much a part of feng shui as well because when we project ourselves, when we engage with the world, certain people use different elements to say they they show different emotions, they use different emotions to navigate through their interaction with people and the environment. So fear, fear is water, fear is cold, fear is distance, fear is movement, it's enactment. When you are truly afraid, you will do things faster than you think. You will react. And the reaction itself can be valued as negative or positive, but it's better to view it in a neutral sense. It's better to see it for what the energy is as a quality. And in that sense, I want to divulge a little bit on this. So the positive emotion that you can see just beneath the negative emotion on this website is calmness. So calmness also requires a certain distance or a certain complacency without needing to be close, without needing to be involved or dabbling or connected in any sort of sense of the word. So the vastness of space that Allison, you were talking about in your talk, it, I just thought, oh man, this is so watery <laughs> and it's so beautiful because that's the beauty of water in that it's the master nourisher. It goes where it can. It doesn't have any sort of platform that, that holds it in, certain, in a certain place or keeps it hostage. It is the antidote to being a hostage. So it's just gorgeous. I just thought there was such a awesome thing to talk about today with, with emotions and whatnot. So if you're on the website and you're following me, or if you can visualize the pentagram, I know people are afraid of the pentagram because of its use in satanic worship and whatnot and their imagery, but they, they stole it from the astrologers. They stole it from the ancient Chinese understanders that have visualized this change. We see it in people. We see it in uh, the life cycles themselves of birth and death. We see it in the changing of seasons. It's all about this. It's all about illustrating cycles and repetition. And that's all about how things manifest in this realm. They can only manifest because of these phases, these elements that are at play, and nothing lasts. No matter how, no matter how old the Sphinx or the pyramids are, there is a day they will be, they will turn back to sand. They will be destroyed. Like in the Bible, it says, I'm not a religious person, but you have to appreciate this, this sentence. Everything that is created will go back to dust from which it came. That is what this whole thing is about. So water, what's the next phase in water? What's the next cycle? Water creates wood. Water nourishes plants. Water facilitates growth. The distance, the coldness, the calculation provides the perfect environment for things to grow, for things to accumulate and to collect, and to grip and to formulate. That's all about wood. So if we look here on this, on this website, wood is the, the green column that you can see. So if you go down here, the virtue of wood is that of benevolence, right? And the, if you go further down, um, when we, let me find that section. Uh, okay, so the, the negative emotion would be anger, right? Because that's constricting. So have you ever found yourself in a situation where initial fear comes onto you and can be overwhelming, but can quickly change into anger? So fear can turn to anger. You know, 
Um, I'm a big fan of Star Wars, and that quote that Yoda talks about, or that Yoda says, always comes up whenever I talk about this particular subject with emotional utility and using the five phases. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. And then he says hate leads to suffering, right? But fear, anger, hate. If you look at the five phases, do you notice anything? Fear, water, turns to anger, wood, turns to hate, fire. It's just going in a natural, a natural progression of the five faces, the birthing cycle. If you accumulate this within yourself and if you get stuck and you collect these elements or you collect these emotions and you feed them, they will naturally progress in this order or they can and it's easy to do so. There's all sorts of other things we can say too. For example, have you ever found yourself in a hateful situation or an anger or, or excuse me, not an anger, but a bitter situation? You know, fire and wood are similar, but where fire is different from wood is that it explodes. So when we get angry and we feel the full force of wood sabotaging our emotions, we get, we get pent up, we get strapped down, we get uh, constricted, right? So wood is all about constriction. If you look at how roots of plants grow in the sense of wood, roots grow specifically to grasp, to collect, to hold on to. That whole clinginess attribute is such a wood trait. And that is anger when it's manifested negatively when it's when it's positive it's patience because if you've noticed people who are very very patient they will hold on to situations and they can sit there and they can be content about it so really when we're just talking about negative or positive manifestations of the elements those emotions are deemed negative or positive depending on the circumstances depending on what's going on at play or how you are personally using that emotion within yourself. It shouldn't be ignored. It should be navigated. It should be um, looked at. You should really um, take the opportunity right now, especially when we're in the middle of seasons changing, to adapt and to see the patterns that are emerging and to make sense of them yourself from a personal standpoint. You know, I really agree with Allison on the point of, you know, there's a lot of <clears throat> fear mongering going on and there's a lot of, um, you know, hey, I've got this product, I've got this service, you've got this problem, let me outline it for, for you, let me gaslight you, this is what the solution is and you have to come to me to, to, to get the solution. You don't have to. All you have to do is explore, all you have to do is is put your scrutinous eyes towards yourself. And instead of trying to value everything, this and that, take a look and see what this is illustrating, what these colors can show, what these lines can, um, can distinguish. Um, so the, the scrutiny of water in that it flows wherever it can and it harbors fear, that doesn't have to be an end-all solution to something. It's not going to stay that way. It shouldn't stay that way. Phases are all about movement. And in fact, the five phases or the five elements in Chinese are called Wu Xing, which literally means five movements. Xing means to move, to go, to be enacted. So the whole underlying premise of understanding emotions as a as a function of the five phases is that they are not designed to be stagnant. They are not designed to collect and never to change. So I hope this video was really helpful. Um, I can still talk about it a little bit more. Let me go back and see if anybody's watching it at the moment. I'll post it live so you guys can comment on it and I'll try to um, comment on on everything that you bring up because it's really fascinating to talk about. It's really personal and I understand if you don't want to talk about your own emotions, but um, I can give an example here of myself. 
So if we look at um, the emotions still, um, I have a lot of fire. Uh, I'm a yin fire sign with a lot of yang fire, uh, Bijia. So I have a lot of passion, let's say, and passion can easily turn into bitterness, which is which is different than just anger. It's it's the cousin to anger. It's the process of what anger will lead to if there's an abundance of wood. Think about building a bonfire. The more wood you pile on it, the faster and harder it will burn and it will fury and it will uh, sizzle and crack and hiss. So this is fire. Fire is exploding the anger into a bitterness because in order to be bitter, you have to understand uh, passion and love and warmth and um, closeness. You know, a bitter person <clears throat> will try to share that bitterness in the same sort of enthusiastic manner that a joyful child wishes to share his smile with people. So this this is something that's never talked about in, in Western society in how in where that comes from and why it happens. You know, I'm prone to bitterness, um, but I have a lot of earth that I am endowed with. And the, the immediate utility that I have available to me is to transform that bitterness into the earthly emotions. And so if we look at the earthly emotions here, it could be anxiety, it could be empathy, worry, regret, remorse, obsession, self-doubt, faith, trust. These are the emotions and the virtues and the expressions of these five phases of this earth. So have you ever been in a situation like I have where your joy or your excitement has led to anxiety? This is a classic case of fire burns bright, burns big, burns fast, and accumulates earth quickly. If you're a person that has a lot of earth, or earth is a focus on your personal strategy with our astrology that we have to use, then this can easily turn into anxiety and worry and weightedness because earth is all about accumulation. It's all about the canvas or the ground that we stand on if there's so much to stand on and there's so much to feel from that canvas, then that turns to anxiety. It's easy to see how that can, that can be how we experience it. But in the, in the greatest sense of the earth, that could also be empathy. Anxiety and empathy are one and the same. It's just how you're experiencing it in that context, what it means to you personally. So that's something I'm prone to myself. I've found myself in many a circumstances in my life where I'm excited, either in a positive or a negative way, and that will lead to a development of anxieties or that will lead to a situation where I will eventually feel, oh, I've got to shut up and I've got to be receptive right now and I'm perfectly fine to listen in my conversations that upset me that have something to offer me in terms of clarity or in terms of navigating my own emotional intelligence. So this, this is just, these are just some simple examples. Um, of course, elements can invade each other. There's the, the birthing cycle, which is where you just draw a line around the edges of the pentagram that's drawn with the five phases. You have that star, right? The five edged star. That's those lines that draw the star are the direct um, are, are elements that directly conflict with each other or are directly uh, challenged by other elements. For example, fire has a weakness of water, so water will directly impede water where it or excuse me, water will directly impede fire where it may burn. And so we can see, uh, in an emotional context, that if you're laughing or if you're excited or if you're um, really agitated to an extent that you can't sit still, fear, if it presents itself, 
immensely enough or strongly enough will put you in your place quicker than you can say, geez. <laughs> so that's an example of where water will go to where fire is and it will change the quality of what's happening in that moment instantaneously or it can or it's easy to you know on the flip side water's biggest kryptonite so to speak is earth so where there may be where there may be fear the earth can impede and change that that emotion from fear uh through through trust or through empathy um you know, empathy is a great antidote to fear um, or loneliness, insecurity. If, you know, that's a manifestation of, of fear. If you're still looking on this uh, website, it's, it's an amazing uh, resource. I really, really love um, the guy who put this uh, out on the internet for us all to see, you know, us all to share and to, to look at um, fear or people who are fearful can be lonely or insecure, right? Um, so you can see how easy it is that faith or trust is a direct challenge to that water manifestation. It will change. Its mission is to change that emotion if you are receptive to that element. If you are understanding of how that poker card can be used when it's your turn to play the game of life. I use that analogy all the time with, with new clients, with people who are just getting interested in astrology. This astrology does not tell you what the future beholds. It doesn't tell you what's going to happen. It doesn't tell you what your uh, doom is, what is going to happen. It No. It tells you what your poker hand is. If life is like a poker game, it tells you, here's what you have to work with. How are you going to work now? So that's literally all this is. So there's so many things to talk about with here, and I don't want to make this into a big, big, long rant, but I was just compelled today with Allison's wonderful video that she put out, which was very... Um, it was very personal for her to put out. And I think you should keep that video up, Allison, because it showcases how vulnerable we can feel as people and how, how powerful or how empowering it is for us to showcase our own vulnerability because I don't see it as vulnerability today. I see it as how can we navigate five phases? How can we navigate the energy? How can we identify it? What are we going to do and how is it useful to us? And how can we appreciate this? Fear has a place. I'm not gonna say that you need to be fearful. That's not the message I'm saying today. The message I'm saying is the elements exist and we should acknowledge that and appreciate that. That's all. <laughs>